Chris Leibig. I was John Zorlin's law partner from 2005 to 2011. I first pretty much met John in 2003 when he invited Andrea Mosley and I to his office that he shared with Lisa Kimmler to ask us about moving into his office. Um, we had our own firm at the time, having just left the public defender's office. Um, we had a lot of discussions about why he would ask us to do that. We didn't really know it. Um, later figured out Lisa Kimmler, as he knew, was about to become a circuit court judge and that this was the beginning of his him wanting to work with us, which to us was amazing and awesome. Um, clearly he knew that ahead of time. With Lisa gone, he was going to need some people to help out, some people that, for example, knew how to use Microsoft Word. Um, and we began to get to know John. Um, my father, who was John's age, about a year younger, died around this time in 2004, and he also was a very prominent, nationally known attorney um, in a different field, labor law. But I think I was used to being close to someone like that, you know, close to someone with a person, distinctive personality who was, it had a really, really successful legal career, and really just became very, very close to John. And John, honestly, for the last 20 years of being your friend, the biggest takeaway of it was the friendship. Um, no one person got to be part of the whole ride of your life. Um, lots of different people fit different places, um, and I am just so glad I got to be part of those last 20 years. You really kicked ass during those last 20 years. I think a lot of that was because you never stopped making friends. That was just a great, great thing about you. And so, thanks for everything, John. I miss you. Um, I have always enjoyed fucking with authority and being up at their own, with their own rules. Hello, my name is Sonia Swansboro, and I've known John Zwirling for about 10 years. And within that time span, what I've learned about John is that John loved his wife, Pat West, unconditionally. He was very proud to serve in the military for our country. He loved his friends and family, and he loved his work as an attorney. But he also loved eggplant parmesan. And he would teach me specifically how to make it with minute details so that we never messed it up when we made it for his birthday. John was a great guy full of laughter and joy and he always said positive things about everybody, and I will miss him dearly. Heaven is way better with John in it. I said, well, there's nothing that we have to do. We'll, we'll, you know, and he said, to, to have him paint the boats. And I said, no, I'm not gonna do that. He said, um, I'm ordering you. Your men are not going on r and &R. And I said, I, I don't care what you say. You know, they're going, and we're not painting the damn boats. Yeah. And next thing I know, I'm going to be, I got called up to see the captain. Uh, and the captain says, I understand you refused a direct order in time of war. I mean, can you be court martialed for that? Yeah. Okay, just checking. And I said, uh, it's correct. He said, what? what What's going on? So I told him. And uh, I said, all right. Uh, and, and told us both to leave. And within a week, they took the third division, which was the boats, and made it its own department, along with the, the engineers who took care of the engines, and put me in charge. Hey. <clears throat> this is John Shapiro in Virginia. Um, I met John's whirling when I was a lost law student. Uh, I begged him to hire me as his law clerk. I worked for him for <clears throat> $75 a week. Uh, it changed my life. I rarely went back to law school, uh, graduated, and John and I became partners. He saved my life. Uh, he taught me everything I know about being a good lawyer. Miss you, John. I'm Megan Shapiro. I knew John truly my entire life. 
he got my father into criminal defense and he's always felt like a part of my family. I'm sure that I don't know a third of the things that I'm indebted to John for, but one is the most special valuable gift that I know of that John gave me was his trust. To have John uh, believe in me as a young lawyer and just as a person, that was everything to me. I really miss him. Hi, Pilar Moffitt here. I'm the daughter of Bill Moffitt, one of John's old partners. Um, Uncle Jay-Z, I'm gonna miss you so much. My favorite memory is hiding under your desk, playing with all of your pretty kaleidoscopes while you do depositions. <laughs> I love you and I'll miss you. John was truly one of a kind. He was a dear friend and the best partner anyone could ask for. We had so many great courtroom moments together. He was curious about what makes people tick and he had this disarming quality about him that could convince the most stubborn opponent to reconsider his or her position. Without a doubt, John was one of the finest trial lawyers I've ever known. He was so smart and he loved facing down the awesome power of the government. He was tireless in his defense of his clients, and he was in it for the long haul and would stay at it for years if necessary to try to get the best result. And even if he didn't get the outcome he had hoped for, um, I don't think there's a client around that would say that John didn't try to do everything he could do to try to help him or her. Um, and the best part was is that uh, the clients and their families uh, would stay in touch with John year after year after year and some of them became uh, people he was proud to call his friend. Uh, one quick story I think sums it up. Husto um, was uh, uh, convicted and uh, sentenced to serve life without parole. John took over the case after Husto had exhausted all of his appeals and he was able to get the case back before the trial judge. Ultimately, John's efforts were not successful, and even though it was a long shot, John really took it to heart that he wasn't able to do more for Husto. Well, 19 years later, unbeknownst to John, in 2007, Husto was released on parole, and he got out just in time to see his son play his first Major League Baseball game with the uh, St. Louis Cardinals as center fielder. Uh, shortly thereafter, John got a phone call, and it was Husto. He was in town with his wife to see his son play um, at Nat Stadium, and he wanted to connect and catch up with John. John called me to tell me about it, and he was really uh, taken by surprise, ever humble. Um, uh, just couldn't believe it that he had reached out to him. Uh, John kind of giggled and said, that was so cool. John was big hearted and generous to a fault. I feel certain that I would not be where I am today if John was not the friend and partner that he was. He was the best and I miss him. John and I were partners for years and I couldn't have been luckier um, either as a young lawyer or as a more grown up lawyer to have had the privilege to have John as a law partner and more important as a friend. I can remember times as a very young lawyer when we would get on airplanes at night and fly off to places like Savannah and Charleston where clients had gotten arrested for um, smuggling boatloads of marijuana. And as a young lawyer watching someone like John, it was, um, it was just, an amazing experience and um, it made me, I don't know, he made me at least a good part of the lawyer I am today. Uh, I just couldn't have asked for a better friend in John or a better mentor or role model um, personally or for the hundreds of lawyers that um, John touched and clients who he's, whose lives he changed. We, we were just so lucky to have had him and I miss him a lot. Stuart Sears, I worked with John from 2005 to 2013 and I know I don't have a lot of time and you've heard a lot about him already but I just wanted to share one or two quick uh, funny stories that I always think of when I think of John. One is, if you didn't know this, John used to drive this really big 
obnoxious red Cadillac all over town. And he was so recognizable as a person to begin with. But when you added that car, it was just hysterical to see him driving around. And everyone knew he was coming from a mile away. And at one point, he loved that car. It started to smell really bad. And he couldn't get rid of the smell. He tried everything. He took it into the shop. They couldn't figure out what was wrong. And eventually... <laughs> He realized when he was cleaning it out one day that one of our law partners, Chris Leibig, had left a sandwich underneath one of his seats and he was so upset about it. Um, the other thing I'd say about John that's probably more relevant uh, to this weekend is that John, in order to get a security clearance, had to fill out an SF-86 and in that form you're supposed to, you know, disavow ever having used drugs recently or currently and John would refuse to say that he wasn't going to smoke pot um, and it created a real issue. And he argued that his client should have the right to counsel of choice, and he wasn't going to budge. And the government ultimately blinked and let John stay on with his clearance so long as he promised not to smoke pot while the case was ongoing. And really, you know, I think that says a lot about John, that first of all, that he would say that and not lie, and I'm sure he abided by that as well. But it's just, you know, the other thing about John is he cared so much about normal and the work that normal did and i think he single-handedly is the reason why so many lawyers from alexandria um, go to normal and still do and i wish i was there with you all and can raise a toast to john hello i am libby humphreys the elected commonwealth attorney in fredericksburg virginia john and i met in charlottesville when i was a line prosecutor I once saw John establish a good connection with the parent of a homicide victim from across the aisle as the defendant's attorney. John was simply unique. As a friend, John gave me and my husband gifts of fellowship, time, and connection. Shortly after I was elected, he wrote me to do justice, words to live by in his memory. Hello, my name is Raylan Balfour. I am privileged to speak in honor and memory of John Swirling. John and I had a very unique relationship. We became good friends because John was the one person in my life at the absolute worst time in my life that treated me like a human brain being and showed me unbelievable grace and mercy. In 2007, my son accidentally died of hyperthermia when I forgot him in the car. It was the most horrific thing in my life that a, that a mother could ever face or deal with as a human being. I was called all manner of things, a baby killer, child murderer. And then when I was trying to put the pieces back together, the same day of my son's funeral, I was charged with second degree murder, felony child abuse and neglect. When I met John for the first time, he treated me absolutely like a human being. He treated me with the, the, the utmost grace and mercy. He looked at me and said to me, this is a tragic accident and we're going to take care of you and support you to the best of our ability. I was never treated like I was a, a paycheck to him he treated me as if i was his close friend and someone that i needed support and love from and he showed me unbelievable kindness and caring throughout the whole process no matter how frustrated i got with him not knowing the legal process after 16 years of military, I was facing 10 to 25 years in prison and I was facing the loss of my entire uh, highly decorated military career. John and I had a lot of things in common and that was one of them. Uh, he showed my husband and I and my family what it meant to be a human being and to support one another unconditionally. He fought for me, he supported me, and he never even knew me until the, the, the day that we met when my son passed and I had to hire an attorney. I considered him a tremendous friend and he has left a true gap in our family and in our lives. I wish him and Pat Godspeed and I can't wait to see him again and hold Bryce while I talk with him about everything that's gone on since his passing in heaven. Godspeed and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today. From the words of Valentina Jelabova, with his distinctive gait, 
biblical beard and formidable rings, John Zwirling made the most unforgettable entrance into my life at the most existentially challenging time of my life, as he must have done for so many before and after me. I owe him, the man, not just the lawyer, a debt of gratitude that could never have been repaid. Um, and uh, Pat came in with her friend, and uh, I knew her friend because she was had been dating one of my roommates, and um, so we hit it off. And I had my motorcycle outside, and we went on a tour of all the monuments. And back then, it was so nice. Like, just right then? Yeah. You were just there with your bike, and you were like, your motorcycle, well, bike, my, that, and you were like, hey, let's go. That tour. was my only mode of transportation. Okay. Um, and so, we went up to the Capitol, and you could get as close to the Capitol as you damn well wanted. Yeah, and very I, different The police days. would wave at you, and everybody was nice and cool, and, you know, to the Lincoln Memorial, went to the Washington Monument, you know. Uh, it was it was a great evening. It was beautiful out. Uh, moon was you know out. Um, very romantic. Yeah. And so we hit it off pretty well. Hi, this is Brian Porter, Commonwealth's attorney for the city of Alexandria, Virginia, and I'd like to add my voice to those praising John's Whirling, who was a true legend of the Virginia bar. As a young prosecutor, I consider it a privilege to have cases with members of what we call the old guard of the defense bar. I was fortunate enough to prosecute several matters that John was the defense attorney on, and his reputation for legal acuity and insight preceded him. And I will definitely admit that I was nervous uh, the first few times I had to have an in-office conversation with John about a case he was involved with. He was always tenacious in representing his clients, and while we often disagreed about the appropriate outcome of a case. In those discussions, John was always kind and humorous and warm. John came from a different era. He had an incredible aura of integrity and legal acumen. Uh, I know he had a, somewhat of an innate distrust of prosecutors, and he told me so himself. Uh, but he was always jovial with me. Uh, when I showed interest in hearing about an old case that he had participated in back in the 70s, he was quick to give me uh, several anecdotes related to that uh, very serious case, and obviously each one of them had a twinge of humor. I can truthfully say John impacted an entire generation of Virginia lawyers, and his captivating courtroom presence will be missed, and uh, I'm truly humbled to be asked to add my voice to, to the many that are praising him today and remembering. So thank you. Thank you all for putting on this celebration of John's life. Uh, I'd like to share with you some advice that John gave to me uh, when I was just weeks into the practice of law, uh, and John stopped by my office just to see how things were going, and uh, I was overwhelmed by the fact that John's whirling had taken the time to stop by and, and, and check on me. Uh, I really didn't even know that John knew who I was, uh, and as a result, I, I suspect I babbled on about uh, wanting to be just like John when I grew up and win all my cases and be a renowned criminal lawyer. Uh, and he let me go on for a while, and then uh, when I was finished, I saw that humble, knowing smile that most of you all have seen. And John said, I'll tell you, uh, none of us are going to win even most of our cases. Uh, but the one thing that we can strive for in every case is, is to see that our client is better off for having gotten busted. And uh, that stuck with me. Because, you know, as counterintuitive as it is, uh, John understood that uh, when there's a reason uh, that people are placed in a position where they have to come to us uh, in the darkest moments in their lives, and, and if we treat them as human beings, not just clients, uh, we can help them resolve the issues that got them there and turn a very negative experience into a very positive one uh, that can be life-changing for people who put their trust in us. Uh, and. I think that's what John's life was all about, is was just making other people's lives better. Uh, and I, I know we're all going to always treasure the memories uh, that we have of John. Thank you all. Hello, 
I'm Melinda Douglas here in Alexandria, Virginia. I'm very sorry that I can't be with you today as you celebrate John's life. I met John in the late 70s I, when I was working with the firms of Bill Moffat and John Flowers Mark and Rawls Jones. We had a number of cases where we had co-defendants in common. And through that process, I came to know John. In 1987, I left the private practice and I started the Public Defender's Office in Alexandria. And John was such an avid supporter of the office. He was all in, in supporting the Public Defender's Office. And throughout my career, Jay-Z served the role of friend, co-counsel, advisor. He would leap into the fray whenever there was an issue involving my office and some problem with the court. He was there for us. He supported the office by providing paid internships for my interns. Of course, there was a downside to that because what he also did was steal my lawyers away from me when they got comfortable in the courtroom. But it was all good because they got the opportunity to work for John and they became better lawyers. You can't ask for more than that. When I think of Jay-Z, I think of a man with great Intellect, compassion, and generosity. He was a person of grace and decency. He answered the call for help from anyone who asked, and he did so unstintingly and without reserve. There is now a tremendous void left by John. And the only way to fill that void is with the wonderful memories that we have of him and our shared knowledge of him and experience as his friend. Godspeed, John. We'll miss you. My name is Joel. I worked with John for 25 or 30 years on sentencing and prison issues. He was a fantastic lawyer and a better friend to me. Um, outstanding man. And I have to tell you, while we're in the trenches together at times, the most enjoyable moments were after work when he, he and I would go out and watch a ball game together. And we always enjoyed a cold beer. Love you, John. Hi, my name is Ed Unvarsky. I'm a lawyer in Northern Virginia. And um, I had the great fortune of working with John Zwirling uh, for a few years, over the last, uh, over the last few years. I was, I was doing capital defense cases. And when um, that work uh, ended in Virginia, John and the others in his building invited me to, to come join them in their suite. And it was a really wonderful experience. I... You know, getting to work with John and getting his advice on cases was was outstanding. You know, I just enjoyed sitting down in the chair across from him and running him by what was going on and what I had, and then getting his creative ideas and then shifting direction in my cases. And I also enjoyed just hearing John talk and just talk about his life, his work, his time in the Navy, and his cases. And um, so. Um, you know, I'm sorry I can't be there at this tribute, but he's a wonderful man, and I'm glad that he's being celebrated. Thank you. Hi, John. Kathy Etz here, your friend from the NIH drug abuse researcher. I met you through Chris and all of the Virginia lawyers crew. I knew immediately when I met you that I wanted to be your friend. Enjoyed so many hours listening to your stories, exchanging thoughts, listening to your keen analysis of legal situations. Um, you and I are probably the only two people who are going to get what I say next, but I like your boat. You know what I mean. I'm really going to miss you, John. Hi, this is Bruce Williamson in Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, trying to explain John in 30 seconds or even comment meaningfully is like trying to explain the Fourth Amendment to certain judges. But John, those of you who knew him, loved him. John made us better people. He made us better lawyers. He was a loyal, loyal friend and just a superb human being. The world is a better place for John having been in it. Take care. Hello, I'm Gene Rossi. I was a federal prosecutor in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Alexandria uh, many moons ago, and uh, I had the honor and privilege of uh, having trials and hearings with uh, John Zwirling, and uh, at a minimum, uh, he was a man of integrity, 
He was incredibly brilliant and gifted. And to be very blunt, <laughs> he kicked my behind. Uh, I can finally remember one trial, a uh, criminal trial, where he and the late uh, Bill Moffat were the opposing counsels. And uh, it was an acquittal. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed, of course, but I realized uh, that I should be proud because I, I was defeated by two um, extremely gifted attorneys, including John Zorley. Um, he was a man of integrity, a man of honor, and he represented uh, the criminal defense bar with the, the greatest uh, aplomb. And um, I, I will miss him. I will miss him greatly. Thank you. My name is Sean Stout, and uh, Jay-Z changed my life by introducing me to the greatest legal conference in the world. Um, I knew him from the Virginia Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, and he uh, nudged me one day and said, hey, man, you got to come down to Key West with us. Uh, John helped me get the, the John Flowers Mark Scholarship, so I was able to come for free my first time, uh, and obviously I was hooked. Uh, it's great people, great times, and I owe it all to Jay-Z. Miss you, buddy. Hi, I'm Jessica Carmichael. I knew John first as a legend, then as a mentor. He took me in quite literally provided an office for me when I was first starting out, and I learned so much from him. The way he treated every case, every client, as if they were his own family, was an inspiration. Though he had already been practicing decades when we met, his tenacity, creativity, and passion never dulled. And when we tried a case together, I saw what a true force he was in the courtroom. John, you are always revered, remembered, and loved. Hi, my name is Megan Thomas, and I'm the public defender for the city of Alexandria. Um, and I just wanted to take a few moments and share my thoughts about John. He was, um, for me, when I was a new attorney, he was one of the private bar lawyers that I looked up to greatly. Um, he was patient, he was kind, he was funny. Um, he let me run ridiculous ideas by him until I got to the point where I was comfortable with an argument. He always made himself available. Um, I was fortunate to be able to work on some very challenging high-profile cases with Chris Liebig and Joe King and people that I knew in Alexandria that were very close to John, and he was um, very warm and welcoming, and he always made me feel like I could ask him about anything. Um, he was a true stalwart, and his clients were tremendously lucky to have him. And we as a legal community were tremendously lucky to have him, and he's a lawyer I really grew to love and whom I greatly met. So um, thank you, Chris, for letting me share a few words about John. One thing a lot of people say about relationships these days is how transactional they've become. How oftentimes with the people we know, we objectify them to try to get what we want. The thing that always struck me about John is that that was the exact opposite of who he was. The reason he had so many close friends and was so close with so many of you was because of how present he was when he was with you. John really cared about us, each one of us. Even people like me, when I met him, I was an assistant public defender. He had no reason to care about me, and he did, and he showed it, and he meant it. And uh, I think just as much as that, just as much as the concern he had for each one of us, he cared about our community. And he cared about, you know, cared about connecting people who fought hard for justice, who defended the Constitution, who wanted to aspire towards a better uh, system and a better world. And um, in the process of that, I think he also wanted us to really relish these moments that we had together and, and the difference we were making in um, the lives of others. Um, you know, uh, it's just something I will miss immensely about him. Just that, that genuine concern that John uh, had for me, for you, for our, our, our whole community. And um, that's all I wanted to share. So, John, you are dearly missed. Hi, I'm Vince Crisafi, and I'm a friend of John's Rowling's for many years. And he's been around in my life for good and bad. So... I'm going to miss him dearly. He always used to greet me with a hug, not a handshake. And I love him for that. God rest his soul. Hey there, everyone. Um, I know you're having plenty of fun without me there tonight, but I wish that I was there with you. And I uh, want to say just a few words about John. 
Um, Andrea Mosley here from Alexandria, Virginia. I was law partners with John from 2005 to 2013. Uh, we all know that John was a fearless defender um, in defending his clients. He was never limited by pragmatic concerns. We tried many cases together, but I wanted to share with you uh, just a couple of examples that demonstrate uh, his boundless attitude. He once convinced a federal judge while in the middle of a jury trial to ship maybe a two or 3,000 pound pallet of boxes containing counterfeit handbags into the basement of the federal courthouse in Richmond, Virginia, uh, all the way from New Jersey. Uh, this is for the jury to inspect. And I can still see the judge's face and John's face when the judge realized that he had to grant John's request uh, or else there was going to be extraordinary delay. And no doubt, uh, John had no fear walking in there and asking for it and getting it. Uh, another time, John and I tried a case together where he was able to convince the court to allow our client's uh, martial arts instructor put on a t-shirt that was marked up by a medical examiner uh, to detail stab wounds uh, that were on the deceased at the time of his death. And through this creative way of thinking, uh, he was able to demonstrate for the jury uh, the difficult issue, which was the knife uh, was in the hand of the deceased while he was being stabbed. And only John uh, and his level of thoughtfulness and creativity could come up with such a clear demonstration for the jury. John treated his clients like friends, and he made them feel like he would do anything for them, um, and he would. He was brave. He loved one very cold Heineken. In fact, if he ordered the Heineken and it wasn't cold, he would politely ask them to put it in the freezer for a little while and bring it back out. He loved listening to the blues, and I will never forget going into uh, Hell in Heaven with him and Adams Morgan and just having a great time. Um, cheers. To you and Pat, I love thinking about you all together, and um, I know we will never forget either of you. Have a great time, and we'll be thinking about you. Bye. Hello, my name is Saifala Chapman, and I met John Zwirling 20 years ago when the government decided to charge a young group of Muslim men with terrorism. If you're watching this, then I don't need to tell you how great a litigator John is, but there are a few things that I would like to share. Uh, the first thing is, when John took my case... It was as if every fiber of his being fought. Um, he fought as hard for me as I would have fought for one of my own children. Um, also, the way he dealt with other people uh, truly amazed me. Even with opposing uh, counsel, how respectful and how much dignity he had when dealing with them was, was truly amazing, especially when some of the people that he had to deal with probably didn't deserve half of the respect that he showed them. Um, John helped me even after the end of my case. Uh, after I was convicted, there were a few times where my life was in danger and John was always there to help. Um, from the time we started the case and the, the many hours that we spent together, John became part of the family and all of us, in myself, my, my family included, uh, we still think of, of him as family even today. Hello. Uh, just to be clear, I want you to know I am not coming from an undisclosed location, nor am I being held hostage. And however difficult this may be, it is also a personal privilege and honor to speak about John. For 50 years, no client or lawyer could have a better advocate or friend than John Kenneth Zwirling, a big and noble name. But to all of his friends, and you included, he was John, or just Jay-Z, an extraordinary friend to all. I was among the privileged to not only know John, but to become the closest of friends over these past 44 years. We first met and became friends in 1978 when each of us was representing co-defendants in a federal one-time smuggle of hashish into Dulles Airport um, uh, in, like a, in Alexandria Federal Court. In our first meeting, while we were sitting across from each other, I remarked that John looked very familiar, and perhaps we had met before. When we realized that we had never met each other, it soon became clear that I knew him, at least visually, 
because he had attended American University Law School while I was an undergraduate there. And then it became clear, and I revealed to John quite distinctively and descriptively how he then appeared to me. That he was a larger-than-life figure, that he hung out on Mary Graydon's steps, that was the student union, and that he had hung out with the radical lefties and SDSers while fully garbed in jeans and a very, very wide belt that was as wide and as broad as John's personality and smile. That was the beginning. And oh yes, that one time case, largely due to, due to John's efforts, it resolved in a conviction of no more than simple possession, a walk, even then. I'm Ted Simon. I was born, like John, with a very long, multi-syllabic name, Theodore Simon. Since law school, I cast aside my childhood nickname and was always called Ted Simon by everyone except for John. John immediately and forever always called me Teddy, and he did not know it was my childhood nickname, my college name, and how my family always referred to me. But I share this because to me, it's just one more example of the warm and welcoming nature of John that he had for all of his friends, but he had it for his clients, and he also even had it for the opposition. Uh, John, what can I say, was the best of the best. Um, and I mean that as sincerely as possible. Uh, I've had a fair amount of experience, perhaps some expertise in evaluating lawyers, um, having practiced as long as I have, having traveled the country and worked with some of the finest lawyers there are, um, as well as knowing lawyers in an institutional way, having been a past president of NACDL. And I can tell you without any reservation, um, from a personal perspective, from a professional perspective, being in the trenches with John, when it was time to count on someone, you could count on John. And he always came through. Further, I know this personally and professionally, and it's only privilege that precludes me from revealing the more details. Suffice to say, when I had a difficult problem, John was on speed dial, and he was available 24-7, always willing to help, always willing to lend an ear, and always willing to provide wonderful advice and counsel. I'd like to think I did the same for John, but clearly I relied on him more than he relied on me. We were, in many ways, each other's lawyers, and I am forever grateful. You're all familiar with his insightful thinking, creativity, and confidence in the extraordinary results he had. But his humanity really enveloped his work, and I was a uh, close observer to this. For some odd reason, I had one case every 10 years, every decade in Alexandria, the 70s, 80s, 90s, aughts, and teens, and John was always my local counsel. But perhaps equally important, I always stayed uh, during the case with John and Pat at their home. John was the quintessential defense lawyer. He further dignified our noble profession. His commitment and dedication were a marvel to observe and cherish and his tireless, skillful, and successful efforts for other lawyers when they were in their greatest need, when they came under fire, is legendary. And those that he helped through NACDL's Lawyers Assistance Strike Force and his key work as a central lawyer to the success of that program 
those lawyers are forever in his debt. As you know, we all know John is irreplaceable. The world will be less without him, and we are all the better for him. I miss you, John. Dear friend, and your larger than life spirit will guide us. Frankly, I'm surprised I got through this as well as I did. And I'll close as John and I always did. Love you, Teddy. Love you, John. Jay-Z was my friend for really more than 40 years from the time I first got into normal and working with the normal advocates. And Jay-Z was a great lawyer. As great a lawyer as he was, he was a better human being and a better friend. Um, there are times I just remember sitting on the rooftop of his apartment in, in D.C. with a cognac, a cigar, looking out over the city and just letting the conversations flow to so many different topics where Jay-Z was always like full of wisdom, love, wit. I mean, those are some of the best moments that I can remember. Um, we will all miss him. We love Jay-Z. And people like Jay-Z just don't come around that often. So you were quite wonderful, Jay-Z, and we will miss you forever. Hello, I'm Marvin Miller, and John Zwirling and I were in law school together at American U in our freshman year. I was uh, drawn to John when I saw him walking down the hall in a pair of green suede cowboy boots because I was the only kid I thought in school who wore cowboy boots and I didn't have anything else. He and I became fast friends and friends for life. Uh, many of you will hear about how John is a superlative lawyer, one of the best case analysts you'll ever want to meet. And he's much more, though, than a lawyer. John was a real mensch, and he was a really special man. There were times that I know when John would go out and help a colleague who was in dire straits or really in need and help them keep going or get on their feet and nobody knew about it and John didn't say anything about it. I know it because I happen to see it. And he wouldn't always get paid back, but he'd just go out and do whatever was necessary to help a friend. You couldn't have a better friend than John Swirling. The, um, the other things about John that maybe all of y'all don't know, when he and I were in law school together, we would spend a lot of uh, time dealing with anti-Vietnam War demonstrations. We'd ride around on our motorcycles, um, and we had these armbands that were uh, replicas of the Vietnam flag, and we had passes to get through police lines, so which Bill Hirschkop had helped set up through the opposition. And we had radios to keep in communication with each other, which we got from the D.C. Command Center. And we would go around and see where were arrests made, where were the arrestees being taken, and we could radio that back into uh, an office for the demonstrators to help organize getting people over to where they were so that they could be released on... Um, are collateral and people would raise funds to get those folks out of jail. And sometimes we would entertain the police that were listening in on us by doing fire sign theater routines with um, John fire sign theater and a bunch of us. It was really a special thing. And they would sometimes wonder what in the world were we doing and what were we talking about? Because it's, it's a butte. No, it's a mound. Right. Pretty too. Got to move it. Railroad coming through. Get the senator back on the bus. And they'd wonder, what are these guys talking about? 
John was really special doing demonstrations. One time, a uh, DC motorcycle cop with a full dress Harley dumped his bike and couldn't lift it to get it up. John and I and some other demonstrators helped him get it together. There was an occasion when there was a police line and one of the guys was get, starting to s- step out to, to club a demonstrator. John, using his Navy command voice, said, Mr., get back in formation. And the cop just did it because John told him to. That's the same way John had a knack with dealing with witnesses in the courtroom because he could get them to tell the truth whether they wanted to or not. John was very proud to be a Vietnam combat vet. He was in command of a small boat and a patrol boat on the river during the war. Small boats, big patrols, great danger, but that was John. And not a lot of people know that about his background and his history. He was a really great friend to everybody that was his friend. He didn't brook a lot of nonsense. He was a master in the courtroom and just a great, wonderful human being. And he was part of a family. Our family is different. We're not debenture lawyers. We're not arbitrageurs. We walk into a courtroom and the judge wants our client to get convicted. The prosecutor and law enforcement want our client to get convicted. The legislature that has passed most of these bills and rules wants our client to get convicted. And often the jury says, well, he must have done something. And what does this family, this fraternity do? It says, hold on, stop, listen to me. And sometimes when we say, listen to me, at the end of the trial, we walk out with our client. John was great at doing that. And it takes a special kind of person, us, to go in, defend the Constitution, defend rights, and now to preserve John's memory by honoring him in the courtroom on a regular basis. It's been uh, an honor to have had an opportunity to address you. It's a very sad occasion. I just want to say thank you very much. I'm really privileged to have spent my career growing up under the mentorship of John Zwirling. John, uh, more than anything else, really taught me the value, and this was really important as a young lawyer, of just not being a dick, being nice to people, being nice to prosecutors, being nice to judges, being nice to clients when they're all being kind of difficult. And in the long run, that really pays more dividends than I could have appreciated and is the most important contribution to my career uh, today. So I'm, I'm really grateful and John will be very missed.